Item number SCP-1084 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Containment Site-153 has been built around SCP-1084 and the surrounding town, which is abandoned, mostly abandoned. A fence has been built around the town's perimeter, along with warnings of radioactive waste contamination to discourage entry. All efforts are to be made to locate any living descendants of the town's occupants as of January 25, 1914. All residents and descendants are confirmed dead, with the exception of SCP-1084-1. SCP-1084 is a badly damaged granite mausoleum located in a graveyard just outside a small abandoned village in Coahuila, Mexico. An engraving on one side of the mausoleum includes the name of the deceased and the following when translated. Born June 24, 1842. Died January 25, 1914. Age 71 years. We were wrong. Exhumations of the gravesite revealed a long deceased humanoid with decomposition appropriate for the given time frame. If the gravestone is correct, the body belongs to the American author who disappeared in Mexico in late December 1913. Analysis of the body suggests it was killed by multiple gunshot wounds at close range, which is consistent with the reports gathered from SCP-1084-1. The anomalous properties that seem to emanate from SCP-1084 are centered on the nearby village. Experimental subjects entering the village feel a strong sense of discomfort and guilt with no discernible cause, and invariably request to leave as soon as possible. All the buildings showed significant weather damage consistent with a lack of upkeep over many decades. Perhaps most strangely of all, it is no longer possible for any human to recall or record the village's name. This has been confirmed by experimentation even at remote locations, as any conversation about the village, including the town's name, consistently results in all parties forgetting its name. The only person living in the village has been designated SCP-1084-1. Her birth name has been determined to be Estralita Juarez. If her diary is to be believed, she has lived in the village since her birth in 1896. The woman is mute and spends much of her time wandering the streets of the town silently, stopping only to sleep on the floor of various buildings. Every year on January 25, SCP-1084-1 will return to SCP-1084, reach into the mausoleum, and remove a bottle of seven-year-old rum, confirmed by chemical analysis and a single glass. She will then pour a drink into the glass, pour it over the grave, place the bottle and the glass atop the mausoleum, and lay down. Under no circumstances will SCP-1084-1 consume any of the rum. Experimentation has confirmed on multiple occasions that no bottle of rum exists within the mausoleum until she reaches in to retrieve it. The woman will then sleep beside the mausoleum, awaken in the morning, and return to the town. Addendum SCP-1084-A Inside the original home of SCP-1084-1, a diary was located. Relevant excerpts from the diary, translated into English. January 21, 1914 The gringo has done nothing since he stopped here but look at me, and I believe I have the opportunity to gain advantage by this. Grandmother always said that Americans had plenty of money, so maybe I can secure some for myself as his wife or through other means. He seems close enough to the grave as is, but not too close to enjoy the company of a woman. January 24, 1914 Everything they say about Yankees is true. They lack even the barest shred of honor. How the man could put his hands on me in the way of a husband and then refuse me. It sickens me. It is no matter. I will have satisfaction. January 25, 1914 I have told mother and father. They were angry with me but far more angry at the Yankee and more willing to act. They have gone out to recruit some local townspeople for the act. It is done. He tried to escape but could not accomplish it. The rifles in the town are still warm. Body was left outside of town. January 26, 1914 Before the pig dog died, he said something about how nobody would ever speak of us again. Nobody knows what he meant, but I cannot help but dwell on his words. It is no matter. He is in hell where he belongs. January 31, 1914 It is colder than usual. Strange things are seen around town and people are concerned. Some have left. Some have taken their own lives. We are all concerned. February 3, 1914 More dead today. 
Hardly anyone around, it seems. We cannot even speak of the town anymore. February 28, 1914. Not ten of us left. Hard to speak. We are sorry. Carried his remains to one of the unused mausoleums and buried him by myself. Took many days. We are sorry. Carved an inscription into the stone we are. May 31, 1914. We are sorry. January 25, 1915. We are sorry. January 25, 1916. We are sorry. The remainder of the diary is similar to the above.